hello and welcome. Many, if not most, of my reports concisely illustrate how socio-psychopathic mass murderers continually collaborate to bring about the total destruction of society. Failure to, or refusal to recognise this undeniable war on humanity amounts to suicidal cowardice at best, but that's not the focus here. Instead, let's concentrate on cane-toed impersonator Anthony Albanese, whom I'll refer to herein as the fat controller for the purposes of this narrative. After all, what we're experiencing is the cabal-controlled demolition of society, and this effeminately lisping globalist shill declares he's fully in control of it all. A few cretinous imbeciles might be taken in by the fat controller Albo, but by now the majority understand he's a contemptible psychophant taking directions from satanic globalists. This is readily apparent via his glad-handing excessively lavish sums of Australian taxpayers' money to unknown overseas sports teams and illegal proxy wars at the expense of long-suffering Australians enduring the worst economic downturn in the nation's history. How many clear-thinking Australians sanctioned the fat controller Albo to recklessly squander public money on such abhorrent wastage when domestic needs are unprecedentedly dire? Probably none, but the fat controller Albo obsequiously obeys his demonic overlords by ignoring his fellow countrymen and women, or whatever woke rainbow mafia pronouns he gutlessly uses to allude to the sexes these days. And yes, for any hoodwinked morons, there are only two. This grovelling globalist shill is the worst example of cow-towing to establishment criminality ever. But that appalling fact doesn't help the homeless and cruelly disadvantaged victims of his unconscionable conduct. Far from it. But sadistic cruelty and inhumane indifference to this nation's suffering are what will denote this traitor's blood-stained record for all time. He'll go down in history as the slithering Uriah heap of Australian politics. Be that as it may, the overarching question is how to rectify this entirely unacceptable situation. In today's electronic age, combating institutionalised treason presents unique challenges due to digital communications pervasive and instantaneous nature. Treason, traditionally understood as actors that betray one's country, such as espionage or aiding enemies, now extends into the day-to-day -day political administration that continually betrays the nation and its people via application from the inside. Current understanding must evolve to encapsulate the complexities of all forms of treason and the fact that it primarily stems from the highest office. This requires accurately defining the systemic treason that's overtly operating at the topmost levels of government. Since treason often transcends national borders, international cooperation is desirable but unattainable through regular channels, since most international leaders are already captured by the cabal. Once freed from these constraints, countries must collaborate to create treaties and agreements that facilitate the extradition of seditious leaders by standardising legal responses to treasonable activities. But here again, it's a no-go all the while globalist conspirators are the foxes guarding the hen house. Protecting and encouraging whistleblowers who report treasonous activities is vital for detecting foreign and domestic threats. However, as recently exhibited to the eternal shame of this nation, the legal safeguards ostensibly in place to protect these individuals from retaliation are overridden and criminally usurped to accomplish the exact opposite. Instead of punishing offenders, they protect war criminals, known pedophiles and mass murderers at the expense of genuine justice. 
Raising public awareness about systemic treason and the importance of restoring authentic national security can foster a vigilant and proactive society. Educational campaigns through various channels can help more recognise and understand blatantly treasonous activities like banning cash at the behest of central banks, funding illegal proxy wars, uncontrolled immigration, plus supporting disruptive minority groups and seditious enterprises. Countering the rapid growth in public awareness sees excessive surveillance and monitoring measures intruding into every aspect of life, subsequently obliterating the sacrosanct protection of individual privacy rights. Oversight mechanisms such as the Australian Human Rights Commission and independent review boards are irreparably compromised to suppress and erode civil liberties, the very antithesis of their intended purpose. Governments are lawfully required to maintain transparency about their measures to combat treason, including the scope and limits of surveillance activities. But as we know, the primary offenders of government leaders never investigate themselves or allow potentially problematic investigations to proceed. Aggressive targeting of private personnel globally exemplifies the modern landscape of treason. This is exacerbated by AI's burgeoning use of invasive surveillance and monitoring, including creating algorithmic biases to specifically target individuals, groups, or independent social media channels like this one, forever fighting censorship in order to expose the truth. Combating institutionalised treason in the information age requires a revised approach that demands sweeping legal reforms, technological advancements, legitimate public education and international cooperation among the spiritually awake and aware opponents of globalism. We can effectively address the evolving threat of globalism's treason from within by strengthening secure communication modalities and enhancing unmonitored intelligence capabilities. The active engagement of all stakeholders, especially the general public, is essential in restoring and safeguarding future security in an increasingly interconnected world. This end of days final battle between good and evil clearly shows that we all have an integral role to play because it's not for idle spectators, the intellectually vacuous, gutless cowards, or the willfully ignorant. For the moment, our excruciatingly corrupt political leadership poses significant dangers to the viability of this nation and beyond. When leaders prioritise special interests over the well-being of their citizens, they create menacing problems with far-reaching consequences. These dangers manifest in various ways, including the erosion of trust, which most agree has long since gone, economic instability and the violent suppression of individual rights. Corrupt leaders automatically undermine faith in their government. This causes a breakdown in social cohesion and a total loss of confidence in the political process. Consequently, citizens are bitterly disillusioned and disengaged from the political system, further exacerbating the problems caused by deliberately ruinous leadership. A primary outcome of a corrupted political leadership is an economic failure, made again worse by donating public money to undesirable elements unsanctioned by public approval. The fat controller Albo prioritising his own interests over the economic well-being of citizens has created an irrevocable economic downturn, which, in this instance, is the desired objective. This inflicts high levels of unemployment, inflation and poverty, devastating individuals and families, just as with the economic terrorism of the fraudulent COVID scam. In turn, contrived economic uncertainty leads to social and political unrest as citizens become increasingly outraged by their deteriorating economic circumstances and impoverished quality of life. Blatantly corrupted political leadership would quickly fail without the suppression of individual rights and the runaway censorship of free speech obfuscating their treason. 
Corrupt leaders ruthlessly use power to silence dissenting voices and restrict civil and human rights. This imposes a lack of accountability and a culture of fear, where citizens decline to speak out against criminal government or challenge its treasonous policies. As a result, individual rights and freedoms are brutally curtailed, leading to a loss of autonomy and a perilous decline in standards. When leaders are more concerned with maintaining power and influence than the well-being of the nation, they unfailingly prioritise short-term gains over long-term benefits. This then results in a deterioration of essential public services, such as education and healthcare, with long-term consequences for public health and community well-being. Controlled globalist leaders knowingly engage in anti-human activity detrimental to the country, including violating international law, suppressing human rights and destabilising regional security. As a result, globalism's curated political leadership has far-reaching consequences affecting not only the citizens of a particular country, but also the international community as a whole. In conclusion, compromised political leadership directly menaces the stability and prosperity of the offending nation and the world at large. When fat controller Albo and his globalist ilk prioritise cabal interests over all else, they create an environment of economic ruin, the suppression of individual rights and a terminal decline in the overall quality of life. Accordingly, we currently endure the most excessive tyranny imaginable with the vile skexies of fake government ever tightening the noose. Remember, we have no community representation whatsoever, an entirely unacceptable circumstance, exposing taxation as robbery with threats and menaces. You cannot have taxation without representation. So never, under any circumstances, comply with treasonous government. Resolutely resist Albo's hateful despotism and take an unyielding stand for freedom. Thank you for watching.